Good have morning, to. and thank you for listening to Winds of Praise, KWPBLP Newport. Look at that, it's 7.30, and good morning to all my friends. Is my mic on? Yeah. Well, it is, I think. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I see you working on it. Uh, Turn it up. Go. There we go. There, That's now better. my mic now is your on. Mic's on. Everybody else's mic was on, so I think you <laughs> still heard me. This is Scott Albright, and I'm with friends. First of all, Rob, you came in, so good morning to Rob. Good morning. Dupra, how good you doing? Good morning, I'm doing well. Good. And then uh, Colleen and Ernie, you kind of got here at the same time, but in different vehicles. And Ernie yeah. called and said, help me bring this table I, up. Finally, yeah, it was heavy. Months, I finally got it. So I, got, I used my light. You guys carried it. <laughs> I tried to send Colleen back down, but she wouldn't go. <laughs> I said, I'm, pray, I'm for praying us. for their safety. <laughs> she did, too. <laughs> I, mean, I got the light. It worked. Yeah, yeah. we're up here. And so, we're, we're a team, yeah. actually. Good morning. Yes. We're so we're, team. we're here to pray. If you're listening uh, to our broadcast, we're at 98.7 FM. So we actually have a radio station. We're broadcasting in Newport. And uh, otherwise, streaming online at windsofpraise.com. And we're working on the new Winds of Praise Post, which is our uh, now bi-monthly magazine. Wow. Yeah. So I brought in a bunch of them because Stu Osborne, who's also a volunteer at the radio station, likes to take them to South Beach slash the Newport Foursquare Church. And so I brought what was left of the newest one which will soon be the oldest one. And, and uh, I heard uh, the building over there in South Beach that the church has moved out of now, the the plan fell through and it's... It's empty now. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you God... the plan fell through the original plan that the city had? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe they just wanted to get them out of there. Huh? <laughs> so so now the building's empty and they moved out of it, had but to do all that thing, had to be out of there, and, Pastor and, Luke and now says there's nothing. glad that it happened like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Why did they move? Yeah. 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 So there you go. Well, That's sometimes, interesting. Sometimes we need a nudge yeah. from the Lord, you know? So like yeah, that that's such a great that's such a great lesson too, right? That well, doesn't God do that when our plans don't go the way we want? We we broadcast in the Sea Town Plaza, and I remember when we started, it was downtown Newport, um, next to the Mazatlan restaurant. So where there's now a record shop, that's where we were. Hmm. And at one point, only our nobody else's box, electric box, fried. So we were out of power. <laughs> Nobody else in the in the whole block, just ours, and so we had to run a electric cord to the Mexican restaurant to power the radio station, and and as a result of that, we moved to Sea Town. There you go. So there you go. Well, and what I see, and, <laughs> and that I'm so excited about, because I see that on Mondays, you know, Rob and Ernie and and all of these fellows, you know, are going throughout our entire county, you know, because we view. Um, our county has like a little pea patch and we're not about to uh, let it go back um, and allow the enemy you know to take over and so I mean these guys have been you know going throughout our entire county praying over the schools praying over this all of the city um, kinds of things county things whatever but now what I'm seeing is that I'm seeing like a real um, spirit of unity you know among like the pastors all of the different pastors and so like for instance like with us not being able to be in the little warehouse over in South Beach then Seth McRae Mm -hmm. who is a part of the Foursquare you know they invited us to come in so they they have their church service on Saturday night we have our church services on Sunday but which then, they were doing before it's, it's not like they switched their service no, just to accommodate no. South Beach they were no. already on Saturday and they go down to Walport on Sunday so yes, Seth correct. teaches both of them right, right? But the thing is, is as they opened that, then we look at the Christian church who has allowed us, right. you know, to have the Christian school mm-hmm. there and use that building all week long. Right. And so, you know, they've basically gutted the bottom of it and turned it into a school and, and gutted a lot of the classrooms. Mm-hmm. So what I'm seeing is that churches are partnering with other churches to get the work done right. that the Lord wants to get done in this county. Isn't that how it really should be? So should it's, be. it's prayer, and thank you, Rob, for praying. Uh, yeah. Let's pray now. We're here to pray, and uh, that's like the boiler room. It's like what causes things to happen. It's prayer first, and you've said that for a long time. So let's pray, and uh, who, would like to, who would like to pray? I'll start out. Okay. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for 
uh, the conversations and the prayers we've already had this morning. And Lord, we just uh, we look to you every day. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. Um, and I remember as we were coming up the coast on our boat in 2015 or 17 to come here, um, the whole theme was unity. You had me in John chapter 14 for like a month. And Lord, it's been seven years, and uh, it's like we're starting to see the fruit of all of our prayers, Lord, not only for our county and the prophecies that were spoken over this county, that you brought this little team together, our small little radio station here, and we thank you for our faithful listeners and supporters uh, all over the place, and just just continue to bless them, Lord, as they bless us um, with their finances and their prayers. But Lord, we just just don't want to take things into our own hands. Lord, we continue to trust and rely on you. We thank you for the men's conference on Saturday. Lord, we, th- we actually see, we're starting to see the fruit of everything that you've been talking about in your word and in our hearts. Uh, we're starting to see it come to reality. And uh, again, as Colleen just spoke of the unity, we thank you for the unity in the churches, Lord. And as I continue to speak to the pastors throughout the county, Lord, it, I, I am starting to notice a difference. And Lord, the ones that are closed off and the ones that are... Uh, um, you know the ones I'm talking about, Lord. The ones that are really out there and uh, doing things that are contrary to your word, Lord. We pray that uh, you know you would soften their hearts and bring them uh, to the true knowledge of you, Lord, and to speak your truth, Lord. Uh, we are to love everybody, but we're to love everybody in truth and knowledge and uh, based on your word. And we thank you for bringing Abraham here today. I know. Yeah, it's awesome. In Jesus' name. What's up, brother? How you doing, I'm Jeremy? Doing great. Better known as Abraham. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Married Good to morning, Sarah. Everybody. <laughs> Did we get you in there now? Finally. Oh, good. Oh, we're just praying for everything God's doing. Right? You get the handheld mic. That's uh, Jeremy Parker. Just came yeah. in. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, and uh, uh, Ernie, as you were praying, it reminded me of the men's conference. Because I were you there at the men's? I conference? was there. Okay. Oh, oh you were there. At the I men's was conference? at the Calvary Chapel. Yeah. Yes. Oh my. How goodness. did I not see you? <laughs> <laughs> You're awful big to miss. Because, because he's such a short little fellow. I know, fellow. little tiny guy. <laughs> because the reason I ask is, um, Rob, I thought his name was Robert Ean, because uh, I don't know him, but it was Rob Verdeen. Mm-hmm. And he talked about coming up to the Calvary Chapel in Corvallis 29 years ago. And he says, my pastor was Chuck, so I'm assuming that was Chuck Smith. It was. 29 years ago. And guess what happened? As they were driving up the freeway, and that reminds me of you coming in on your boat, he was in the passenger side holding his daughter who needed released from the from the seat that she was in. So his wife was driving got blown into a wind hit and they drifted into a semi truck on the freeway oh, wow. they yeah, went okay. under the semi truck so the semi truck rolled over the top of them and they survived wow and the policeman said i don't usually say this but somebody doesn't want you here <laughs> right wow. and so that was 29 years ago and he is the pastor of the calvary chapel church mm-hmm. it was amazing well Father, right now, we just want to thank you and praise you that just like uh, you told the disciples in the upper room that they were to wait until you sent the gift of your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we thank you and praise you that where normally we would be scared and frightened and and we would not be bold and courageous, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that equips us. We thank you that you have given us the helmet of salvation that protects our mind, actually what we think, what we hear, what we see, what we say, even bringing every thought into alignment. And we thank you, Jesus, that you said in the Bible that we have your mind. We thank you for that gorgeous robe of righteousness that protects our heart, our uh, mind, and our our emotions. We want to thank you and praise you that uh, you are ordering our steps. That's right. We thank you that we are filled afresh and anew every mm-hmm. single day mm-hmm. so that we can walk and talk and pray in the Spirit. And Jesus wow you are the belt of all truth all truth satan is a liar if his lips are moving he's lying he comes as an angel of light but you give us wisdom discernment revelation so that we know truth from error we know right from wrong that's right and we want to thank you and praise you for that and we thank you that as i look around this room and i see all of the feet all of the feet that are bringing the good news wherever in the world we go and we want to thank you and praise you for that and we thank you 
for the shield of faith and that it's like big, like a door. And that as we bring that shield together as a group, I mean, there's no breaking through it. And I thank you and praise you that it protects us from the flaming arrows of the enemy. I thank you and praise you that as we begin to push back against the kingdom of darkness, we thank you and praise you that you have created mighty powerful weapons for tearing down the strongholds of the enemy which is the double-edged sword of the word. And I always think about the fellow that, I can't remember the name of the big fat guy, but I remember that double-edged sword went in and the dirt came out. (laughs) And so I thank you and praise you that that's exactly what happens with the word of God. And I thank you that it absolutely transforms our lives. We thank you for um, people like Carlos and others who are helping uh, young men and women uh, coming, you know, back out into society so that they have the life skills that they need to have in order to be able to go forward. And so, Father, help us to pay attention. Uh, just like you, Jesus, every morning, every morning, you go hang out with the Father and you would carefully listen to what he said. And then you would just say, hey, I just only do what the Father shows me to do. So thank you for that example in our lives. And thank you that we are excited to be able to be a part of what you're doing. Thank you that we can do absolutely nothing in and of ourselves. But as you partner with us, thank you that we are able to push back the kingdom of darkness. I thank you and praise you that the United States of America is once again one nation under God and supporting and encouraging um, our uh, Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel. And we pray the peace of Jerusalem over the entire country of Israel. Amen. 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 This is Winds of Praise. So so here's a test for you, Mr. Parker, since you were there. Uh so that we were famous, and Colleen, thank you for doing that bookmark, but six pieces of armor that we're to put on every day mm-hmm. found in Ephesians 6. What's the seventh piece? I'd never heard this before. He, he Prayer. spoke about there Prayer. Yeah. Exactly. Prayer. He yes. says, he, Rob Verdeen says, uh, there's, I think it was Rob, he says there's actually seven pieces. Do you know what the seventh piece is? And as we're all like, what? And he goes, Prayer. Prayer. And if you read Ephesians 6, you'll find that, that after you gird up, and you're praying when you gird up, but right. okay, then pray, pray continually. Right. Well, That's right. Yeah. Well, one of, one of the things after I do that part, when of course the sword of the spirit's the last, and and I always add every time I'm praying that in the morning, it's like Lord, thank you that you've given all of us um, the most powerful weapon on the planet, and mm-hmm. that is our mouth speaking His word. Oh, mm-hmm. That's right. His I, word. Is- I went up and down with the gun issue for years. I I get a bunch, I'd sell them. I get a bunch, I'd sell them. <laughs> Right, and then I get a bunch again. It's like, Lord, what's going on here? And then he said, Ernie, you've already got the most powerful weapon on the planet during one of those times. And he goes, and that's one I'm in my bucket of nuggets that the Lord's given me over the years. But your mouth speaking my word, there's nothing more powerful on the face of the earth. That's right. And in fact, as you were saying that, Ernie, I was thinking about a testimony from Dutch Sheets, and he was talking about, I don't remember, I believe it was perhaps like a senator that he had been invited to Washington, D.C., and they were in, you know, one of the, you know, kind of meetings that they have, and the Lord allowed Dutch Sheets to see that the person leading that particular meeting was like totally out of order. I mean, totally, I mean, out of order based on the principles of the Word of God. And so anyway, um, the fellow that was leading that meeting, he just very quickly, he just called the meeting to a close, closed his, his laptop and away they went. But the senator that had invited Dutch Sheets to be there, he said, I have another something I have to do for like a half hour or whatever. So just go ahead and stay in this room and you know you can pray and whatever and God showed him to pray that that person would be removed from his place of authority and it was less than 30 days and the person was no longer in that position nice. so think how powerful um, just by Dutch sheets listening to what the what God said to him and prayed against that you know, that influence that was so out of order. And so, Father, even right now, I mm-hmm. just think about 
Barack Hussein Obama. I yeah. know that we have prayed for he and Michelle and Sasha and Malia over the years for their salvation. Bring them to uh, salvation, knowing you in an intimate and personal way. Yeah. Yeah. But if he is not going to do that, I thank you and praise you that you are able <laughs> to remove him from his place of authority and that you are able to um, to squelch um, his influence in evil ways. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, you are listening gotcha. to Winds of Praise. That's Colleen Big Deal. I've got Ernie Mokwin, cool. Jeremy Parker, Rob Dupra, and myself, Scott Albright. you got to be careful when Colleen play praise for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, here's it's the thing. thing. No, that's great. Isn't I, think, that wonderful? I think what's awesome is, you know, as Christians, we're taught that prayer is our way to supplicate, it's our way to communicate, it's right. our way to petition God. But I, I really... Let me, let me rephrase this. I have met plenty of Christians who don't really put a lot of stock in their prayer. And, and, and I tell them, look, what you have to believe is that prayer right. is truly the only thing that can change this world. That's mm-hmm. right. That's it right. It's true. I mean, no matter how much money, how much power, how much You're weaponry, right. how much manpower, how many man hours, uh, is put against God, it doesn't matter. When his people pray fervently, he hears and responds, right? This right. is this is this is what happens <clears throat> and, and when you I mean, the word says it so many different ways, but very simply, if God is for you, what can be against you, right? Well I think it's in Philippians maybe. The fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Avails mm-hmm. much. Yep. And the Bible says, what else does it say to pray without ceasing? (laughs) Are you righteous? Not in myself, no. Yes, we are. We're covered by Jesus. We are covered by the robe of righteousness. Well, you know what I love about the word righteousness? You know, when you look in the Hebrew and the Greek, um, one of my favorite definitions for righteousness is conforming to the specifications (laughs) of a blueprint. So when the Bible says Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness. Mr. Mechanic. (laughs) Yeah. He he came to fulfill all righteousness. He came to fulfill the plans that the Father had. Mm -hmm. And it says now, though, as born-again believers, we are now the righteousness of Christ. That means now we are fulfilling the plan that the Father Father has prepared for each one of us as an individual. Is it that crazy? If that doesn't make you excited, I don't know what will. It doesn't matter. He knows our shortcomings. He knows we're going to blow it, but not not as an excuse. But he uses us as imperfect as we are for his glory. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. And we get to it's nuke people. We just get to nuke them with the love of God for, and it's eternal. Tell us about the popcorn. Uh, uh, okay, so this is my new and okay, so <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep this within a, for I'll try to do two minutes here. So years and years and years and years and years ago, when I was having a conversation with the Lord, you know, probably twenty years ago now, over twenty years ago, the Lord gave me the analogy as a boy. My dad, uh, my stepdad, pushed me into. Uh, a work ethic so i'd go be washing neighbors windows mowing lawns doing all these things washing cars and i was like making money it's like good anything i wanted you make this much money and then we'll kick in the rest right so anyway i said all that to say when i was mowing lawns with this little old piece of junk lawnmower just before the lawnmower would run out of gas it would rev up And so about 20 years ago, the Lord gave me that analogy. I go, Lord, what do we look for? Just like the disciples when they were asking Jesus, what do we look for what, when you're coming back? You know. And so I was kind of in that same uh, thought pattern. And the Lord said, well, just watch for the rev up period. Oh. And then he showed me the picture of the little lawnmower. And so, you know, over the course of the years, is it now? Is it now? Is it now? You know, I thought when Trump, you know, when the election was stolen, um, I thought that was it, but it's not it. Did you just say that it's live not, on the air? I, I, I can say anything I want. This is America, baby. And uh, so, uh, this guy's like, oh no. So what happens is, <laughs> what happens is now, <laughs> lately, I think look, I think we're either in it now, or but I believe I believe with my whole heart, if once Trump gets back in. And God's going to allow this country, and the rev up period is only is going to mean one thing. It's going to mean the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we've ever seen. That's the rev up period, and I believe God's going to allow this country to finish what it started, and that's to literally promote the gospel to the entire world. So how does that relate to popcorn? Well, I'm, I think we're starting to see it. God, <laughs> we've been, you know, if you've been listening over the last <clears throat> three or four weeks, um, people we've been praying for for years have come to a genuine relationship with the Lord. People 
that are close friends that are agnostic and homosexual and in perverse lifestyles are asking us questions. But the thing I've noticed is I've seen almost the desperation in their eyes. I mean, they, they've all been desperate. It's like, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what to do. Go to Jack Hibbs Church. Went to Jack Hibbs Church, got born again. He's mm -hmm. driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. He's texting me all the time. But it's genuine. He's asking me questions and our other friend. So anyway, the popcorn is, I believe... You know, and I, I didn't get to do it when I was out in the desert a few weeks ago, but I got those Jiffy Pop things that have been around forever. Mm -hmm. It's a little, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, plate with the, and it starts to fill up. Well, it's it's starting. You know, you got to sit there. The thing that's irritating about that is even if you got a good fire going, you got to sit there forever until it starts popping. <laughs> but you got to keep shaking it and you got to keep moving it around because if you let it sit, it'll burn, right? Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden it'll start to pop, Shake pop, it. pop, pop. And I think we're right there. I think we're at that, that to me, is starting to represent the rev-up period, which is going to equate, <clears throat> based on my relationship so, so with the Lord, I guess. you just say the name Jesus and you declare oh, him as the yeah. Savior, the hungry and the ready, yeah. and, the, and yes. the ready will go, oh, that's I've been, it. I've been noticing a lot more people lately to read in my truck. Normally, because I'm watching my mirrors, you know, especially when I'm in traffic, and I notice a lot of people are reading the gospel on the side of my truck. It's like, oh, I think my truck is going to lead more people to the lord than i am but you know what i don't care but i think i think you're you're right on the money i think so many people today in our world they're so confused yeah right and, and it has nothing to do with the lifestyle they live it's just the world that we are in you mean you mean satan the one that came to steal Kill, kill and destroy yeah. and we're deceive. noticing a little bit of that happening <laughs> and here's and, and here's the thing this is something laugh. that the lord has just he has burdened my heart for not disbelievers and he has burdened my heart for uh believers who have fallen away right. but he has specifically burdened my heart for people who who don't care who are right. apathetic who just they they feel like we as believers have chosen to allow something to direct our lives right right as if it is it is a switch that you can turn on right. and, and turn off and they have just chosen not to acknowledge oh they don't understand switch. And, and that's maybe, true freedom maybe perhaps but here's the thing they don't understand that it is born in them because they are made in the image of God, there is something within them that seeks the divine. Right. And the Bible tells us that if you don't put God in his proper place, you will put something else there. That's right. Whether it's yourself, whether it's money, your job, your spouse, your kids, whatever. Right. And it will always fail you. It will always fail you. Well, and you yeah. know, Jeremy, as you were saying that, I was thinking about the fact that remember that oftentimes um, people would pray, Lord, help me with my unbelief. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, help right. me to trust you and believe you. Right. When you say something to not question it, and who comes along, you know, to steal, kill, and destroy, and to accuse us, yes. and to condemn us. So that's really the battle right. that's going on, is that... That the enemy of our soul is trying to convince us that prayer doesn't work, which is a big lie. Big lie. And, and we see, just like I gave the example of Dutch Sheets being told to pray that that fellow would come to Christ or he would be removed from his place of authority. And so it's like we need to be faithful to pray what the Lord shows us to pray. And you best can do that as you actually pray back his word to him. Absolutely. Isn't that wonderful? You were saying something, Scott? Well, what I'm just fascinated with recently, and we only have five minutes to go, we, we talk about the six pieces of armor to put on, and now we've been told of a seventh. We're reminded right. <laughs> of a seventh. And I've always been fascinated by the seven spirits of God. If you read in Revelation, it's like, what in the world are the seven <laughs> spirits of God? Because we acknowledge the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the three in one. It's a mystery. We don't quite understand it. But what in the world are the seven spirits of God? So I've been pondering that. And the seventh is the fear of the Lord. Ooh. The fear of the Lord. We, we in our world, tend to be afraid, if you want to say it, of the devil. Well, who cares about the devil? Right. right. Fear right. God. 
yeah, the fear yeah. of the Lord is part of is part of who he the is. The beginning of wisdom. Right, and that's the other part. The, the, the spirit of the Lord <clears throat> is wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of, let's see if I can get this right, um, understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might. Mm, right. The spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? So if, if people would understand... You don't need to fear the devil. He's just always creating havoc. But it's God that you need to fear. He has the power to take your soul and put it into de- into hell, which he created for the devil. He's the one you're going to have to stand before. So right. if you don't fear God, eh. that's going to be the def- to me. That's going to be the definition of true terror when th- when an individual stands before a holy God but and that's realizes, part of the seven oh, spirits of God and that's yeah, the last one is the yeah. fear of the Lord the fear of God well I gotta say and I've said it before and this is gonna be strike four but if you're out there and it's so prevalent today back, with bro. all these concerts <laughs> I don't you're everything, everybody is openly worshipping Satan right now in concerts and Taylor Swift they made a big I was watching a big report listen folks if you're listening right now and you are actually a satan worshiper you're the biggest idiot on the stinking planet i mean come on really i mean it's it's like blows my mind the people that worship satan i mean a little bit of power and you know the unlimited sex drugs and rock and roll that you're getting right now it's not going to be worth it for your eternity spent in hell. So that's when he where kills you're going. you, is he going to say, oh, that's okay? No, he's going to laugh. Look at Anton LaVey. Anton LaVey was the head of the Satanic Church for years and years and years in San Francisco, which is kind of the headquarters. And the Santa Cruz Mountains, where all my kids were born, is a heavy-duty Satanic area for worship and sacrifice and things of that nature. It gets real dark up there. And so anyway, but a long story short, when Anton LaVey on his deathbed when the demons were coming to get him as he was dying, he was like, oh, something's wrong. This isn't right. No, He thought it was going to be a big party and he was going to be welcomed into hell on a flaming Harley Davidson with a bunch of whatevers. But no, the demons were coming to drag him to hell and he saw it as he was dying and he was freaking out. But there is a relief and his name is Jesus. Yeah, he, he could have repented came, right there. He came on to his ransom bed. you, to pay for your sin, right. my sin. We all have sin. It's gone. It's forgiven. It's forgotten. So, yep. one of the points I've tried to make in the pulpit is do you want your sin to be remembered? I don't think so. <laughs> or do you want it to be atoned for? That's what Jesus did. Yeah. But look at how. He took your place. Look, look how gracious Jesus really yes. is. I mean, the thing is, is that the biggest gift he has ever given us is the gift of choice. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and so really, even as Ernie's telling about the satanic worship and whatever, you know, it's like he gives you a choice. You can have that as a choice, right. or you can accept the gift that Jesus has offered to each one of us. And so I think. Thank you, Lord, that it's not like he bends our arm and right. makes us have to do a certain thing. It's because he loved us so much that he came, laid aside his, his you know, God position, and that he knew that the whole time he was here, he was going to suffer and die on that cross right. to pay for my sins yesterday, today, and tomorrow Ooh, and when you. and when they are washed away he he doesn't even remember them even if i bring it up he goes hey i don't remember what you're talking about so father right now mm-hmm. we just think about those who maybe have not had an opportunity to receive the gift jesus yeah. that you already paid for and so we thank you that you would open up their spiritual eyes thank you for the wooing and drawing of That's your right. holy spirit thank you for helping each one of us to pay attention to those little promptings to maybe um, make a phone call to um, pray uh, whatever it is and we thank you for millions and billions of new souls in the kingdom of god That's in right. jesus name amen amen and just really quick before we get here i don't want to I, I don't mean to step on anyone's toes but my heart really breaks it breaks for people who have been tricked and lied to into satanism and, right and and i know in our world today there are so many things coming against us as believers but remember jesus said he sent his 12 out as lambs to the slaughter right and, and, and as christians as, as christians our 
m muscular, masculine faith looks like servanthood. And, and so um, instead of, inst we see the symptoms of identity politics, of homosexuality, of Satanism, of hatred, whatever it is. And we try to pray against those, but I want to pray right now mm -hmm. for everyone who is not a believer that the, the Bible says his mercies renew every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying for those renewed mercies. Yes. And I'm praying for the Lord to uh, renew their minds, mm -hmm. renew their minds. Lord, renew my mind. Yeah. You know, till the soil of my heart. And I'm Lord, till the soil of their hearts, of all of our hearts, and remove any stones and re right. replace our hearts of stone, whatever they may be, with hearts of flesh. Thank you. In Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Yeah, and do we hate anybody? Absolutely not. All the no. people we've talked about, the Obamas, the Soroses, the Satan worshipers, the homosexual man, our heart goes out to every so we we love you guys. And we want you to have what we have, which is the peace that surpasses all understanding, only comes from one source, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. by putting your faith and trust in him for what he did for you. Amen. Hey, it's uh, 8 o'clock. This is KWUPVLV oh. Newport. Mr. Quiet Rob. Mm. Would you, would I know. You, I was just thinking about that. Mr. Quiet Rob over there. This would, is a man in, in contemplation would, would and prayer. You, would you say, enjoy. would you pray for us? And sure. then, and then Ernie, you take us out. And Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you mm. for what you're doing, Lord. We just look forward to your return. Come quickly, Lord. Yeah. And uh, Lord, we pray for leadership in our country. We pray yeah. for leadership in our state, uh, in our county, Lord, and in our towns, Lord. We just pray that yes, you would... Uh, <laughs> move boldly and quickly and uh, yeah. come back soon in Jesus name Woo. Amen. All right. okay this is 98.7 KWPBLP Newport Oregon and as always go out there and give them heaven give them heaven <laughs>